Oh, this is Miami Web Fest, where you experience new media in a new way. I'm Ronald S. Gamble, one of the festival board of directors, and it is my privilege to have with us today the award-winning director and producer of the series Narco Leap, Ms. Kate Green. Hello. Welcome, Kate. Hi. It's great to um, be back. Like I was saying earlier, coming back to Miami, although I'm not really there in person, it does feel like we're coming home because we've been at Miami before. So uh, we love this festival. So thanks for having us. It's, you're quite welcome. It's our pleasure. And uh, it's, it's great having you. I know you've had quite a busy schedule, but um, for our viewers and, uh, and also for the rest of us, uh, tell us about yourself. Sure. Well, right now I'm, I'm in a production office of, a, I'm working on a Discovery Channel show, a new show up here in Canada. Um, so I do a bit of writing, um, but mostly I'm a producer and director. And I work in the scripted uh, arena and industry, and I have my own production company called Kate Green Productions, and we develop and produce uh, really great content, usually by and for women um, and made by women. But uh, but that doesn't mean we we love stories about dudes too. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so that's that's me in a nutshell. But mostly a producer and director. But today you caught me. Um, writing on a, a Discovery Channel show, so. <laughs> well, I, I mean, that's that's fantastic. I love the Discovery Channel. And, uh, you know, what you said about uh, focusing on women and the exposure and opportunities is very important, um, not just for women to understand, but for guys, to, gentlemen to understand as well because it takes all of us. And uh, I think that's part of it is that, you know, if we can appreciate and respect each other, um, then uh, we, we can have even better and better products like mm -hmm. what you're producing uh, <laughs> with, um, with your productions. Yeah, I, I think we just need to, you know, we just need to always be telling stories from an authentic place. And, um, you know, I can only really tell stories the best kind of stories that I can tell are from my own perspective and my own experience. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and that's the same with everyone else. And, and those are the ones that really ring true. And so for Narcoleap, yeah, I mean, yes, it's sci-fi and um, I don't have narcolepsy as Kelsey <laughs> does in this show, but I, I wanted to tell a story about a young woman in her twenties kind of coming of age and being very awkward and insecure at the beginning of the journey. And then by the end, really kind of coming into her own skin and her own power and um, realizing that this thing that she thought was kind of a disability is actually kind of her inner superpower. And I think, you know, a lot of young women need to realize that we have those little inner superpowers. We just need to discover them. And so that was kind of where Narcoleap came from for me. So wow. yeah. <laughs> now, now Narcoleap, uh, you've been doing this, this is the second season yeah. that you have out now. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, without giving any spoilers, mm -hmm. um, what are some of the things that we could expect in this second season from, sure. uh, is it Kelsey is the main character? Yeah. Uh, I believe played by um, Ch Chelsea Chel Reese. Chelsea <laughs> Reese? Yeah. Yes, what a fantastic job she does. Amazing. Um, she does an incredible job carrying the series. Yeah, so Chelsea, you, she was on the 100. Um, she had a, a recurring role on that. Uh, she's joined by Alec Ponovic, who is from the Hawkeye series, and Snowpiercer, um, Nicole Oliver, as well as um, a lot of people that know My Little Pony will know Nicole. And of course, Madison, who played opposite Chelsea, Madison Smith and uh, Austin Eckert uh, do an amazing job. And they're yeah. just fabulous, like wonderful actors. <laughs> they're so, so strong and so great. Anyways. Um, <laughs> sorry, that, that's that? okay because I, I I'm watching a series and yeah. I'm just falling in love with them right off too. Yeah. And, um, I, yes, I just, yeah great, I great them. actors. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Sorry, uh, you have to repeat the question. because so, I just... um, What can we expect oh, right. in the second yeah. season? Uh, yes. 
Yeah. So, um, you know, season one was really about Kelsey uh, re thinking that she was alone in this world and with this power and ability and that she was the only one. And so season two, we start to discover that she's not alone. <laughs> oh, God. Sorry. Um, that's my husband calling me. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> um, so in season two, we discover that she's not alone, that there are other people out there that have the same power as her. And they're sort of using it for nefarious reasons and, and kind of, um, you know, they're, they're trying to help the world, but they're kind of going about it the wrong way. And Kelsey, at the end of the season, really has to make a choice of how is she going to use her power? Is it going to be for good or is it going to be kind of this darker road? Right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> well, it's going to be exciting to see all the choices that she makes uh, yeah. throughout these episodes. Uh, and uh, great, great work so far. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited about it. And as we were talking earlier, um, as I'm watching the episode, I'm I'm wanting to to leap into the next moment, <laughs> anticipating what's coming next. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah. nicely, nicely done. Thank you. Um, so now with a production like that, you've got talented artists that are mm -hmm. on your cast. Um, I, I know you've got um, talented people behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You've got the reins firmly in your hands, but with every production, there's always challenges and then there's victories. What are some of the challenges that you've experienced um, on, oh. on Narco Leap <laughs> and even some other productions. Well, how, long like... we, how long we got here? We don't have that long. <laughs> well, just <laughs> give us one or two that you, you feel that we yeah. can learn something from and then sure. what are the victories that you, you yeah. gained from it? Yeah, I think um, the, the most important thing and I think a lot of uh, web series uh, filmmakers come across this is really the financing and that issue of it. And we had a, a fairly hefty budget and um, I had gotten kind of half of the financing and I could not close the gap. I just, I couldn't finally get that last um, pinch of it. And so, sorry, my husband is now texting me like crazy, sorry. <laughs> Um, so um, it came a point where I, I knew I wasn't going to give back the money I had. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you don't want to do that. Uh, so I said, OK, we're going to we're going to pivot and we're going to make a, a decision to to instead of delivering six episodes, we'll deliver four and we'll kind of change the scope a bit. And but we're, we're going ahead. And that was, I think, you know, kind of maybe the takeaway from what I'm saying is that I just, I set a date and I said, we are shooting in, you know, 20, it, it was summer of 2020. And I said, we're shooting, we're going forward and this is happening. And I'm not giving that money back. <laughs> <laughs> so, mine, um, mine, and, mine. <laughs> yeah. And I think, and you know, as, as producers, sometimes we just need to do that. We need to kind of lead right. the church and say this is what's happening the train is leaving the station you're either on or you're off right Take the choice right so um that's what i did and then covid happened <laughs> <laughs> so that was neat um so yeah that really put a, a wrench into things we we thought okay we don't know what's going to happen uh lockdown then uh, ensued and again, uh, luckily, people were very gracious, and they said, "Oh, just hold hold on to the money. Like we know it's world pandemic. Don't worry, right. you know." Thing. And eventually, again, I said, um, "Okay, I think by the end of the summer we might be getting out of this, <laughs> at least enough to get, open up our film sets in in um, Vancouver." And that was the case, and we were the first indie project to go back. Uh, so we had all the unions coming and visiting our set and uh, checking our health guideline plans and everything right. we we're putting in place. And it was hilarious because they were trying to compare us to, you know, some of the Warner Brothers issues. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you know, no, we, we're not doing testing every day. <laughs> you know? um, but, you know, everyone was really great and everyone stayed safe during our shoot. There was no, no, um, no, nobody got sick or anything. So uh, it was, uh, it was a great thing. But yeah, lesson is sometimes you just gotta 
take the bull by the horns and, and set a date and move forward and go forward. Right. Um, and I would say, you know, the greatest joy that came out of that was uh, cast, crew, our suppliers, our vendors, uh, our mentors, our executives, everybody came together to help this like little indie project make it yeah. and happen. And um, yeah, that's it's all kind of joys and <laughs> the ups right. and downs of everything wrapped into one. Yeah. Right. But that's that's part of life. That's uh, an emulation of life yeah. in the production. Absolutely. And one of the, I mean, we all can relate to the challenges of the pandemic and mm -hmm. definitely the, the industry took a real hard <laughs> mm. sucker punch even sometimes. Yeah. Uh, the, the expected and unexpected, but um, one thing that we can expect is that we keep rising. And yeah. thank you for producing and committing to producing. And one of the benefits, uh, I would say, it sounds like that you were able to get the attention of um, these critics and and mm -hmm. uh, quality assurance uh, groups yep. to make sure that you have a, a high quality production yeah. that well, we can depend on. Yeah, and, and a footnote to all of that is that two weeks before camera, I got that final gap in financing. <laughs> and they said, we're, we're, you know, you got the money, it's on its way. Right. So right. um, sometimes having that leap of faith. I mean, I felt like right. if I'd gone to Vegas, I would have won. I would have broke the house. <laughs> I did, it was a total gamble. You know, you know. Right. right. But, but we got it and we, you know, we were able to 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 make it happen. We got the scripts, the two the final scripts. So so, anyways, there's six episodes all together. So oh great. Yeah. Well, you keep well, we won't reach that leap of faith if we don't. <laughs> put ourselves into action yeah so, absolutely yes <laughs> well you certainly have been um into a lot of action you've got an extensive background of producing directing what uh casting director also production mm -hmm. manager uh even appearances as yourself <laughs> oh writer well, you went right down to the bottom of the I mean, <laughs> didn't you i mean yeah you've got so much many things with with such a background oh. what inspired you to get started in this industry and, and in such a dynamic way oh gosh yeah well i mean the the short story is i thought i was going to go into theater and do uh stage management or lighting designs i didn't know what but um, uh, I, I soon realized I probably would never own my own house if I stayed mm -hmm. <laughs> working in theater. No, I, I kid. Um, I went to a school that um, for technical theater and, and you had to audition every time for every you know production. Didn't matter. And it was a great idea because it didn't matter if you wanted to be a set painter, you still had to audition because you needed to understand what everybody else was doing. And in particular, you had to understand what the actors were going through. Right. when you know you're doing your job trying to make them do their job better right so uh it was a great program i kept auditioning i kept getting cast so um at 19 or 18 or whatever i was you know i thought well <laughs> i'm obviously meant to be an actress <laughs> 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 so i actually pursued acting for a while and i did okay i um started a all-female sketch comedy troupe um, we did uh, sketch comedy, wrote our own pilot, and um, did shows around town. And I had an agent, and I was doing I was okay. doing all well. Well, but you know, I real there came a point when I realized I would I would most likely be a full time waitress and a very 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 part time actor. And I wanted to be a work I wanted to be working in the industry. And right. um, through the pitching of our uh, characters and the writing of that show that we did. Um, I realized I'm like, oh, this is kind of the producing and trying to, you know, the pitching and trying to organize and, and the, you know, this is kind of what I started out trying to do like stage management or, right. you know, uh, the, the organization and kind of side of it. And, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy and, and I can easily say that I'm pretty decent at it. Um, not the best, but I'm pretty <laughs> good at what I do as a producer. 
And so, uh, and I liked it and I, I really enjoyed it. And I liked bringing all those people, people together and, and getting, getting the project and creatively having some input as well. And so I, I went back into production and um, that was a very long time ago, as you will see from my <laughs> list. Um, but yeah, I you know, started production managing and um, doing volunteer work and direct a first ADing and kind of just working my way up um, the, right. the ladder to doing producing and, and now directing as well. So yeah, I'm a sum of my parts, <laughs> that's for sure. Well, well, we are benefiting from all those, the sum of your parts. And um, <laughs> so, and now you have your own production company. I do. Uh, Kate Green Productions. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that. Yeah. Um, so we do a lot of um, development work. Um, I'm actually taking a little bit of hiatus. So please don't send me your scripts. Please don't <laughs> send me anything, in fact. Um, uh, so, but, you know, my slate is very full right now um, and we're working on uh, some television series and I've got two feature films uh, oh, on the excellent. right now that I are near and dear to my heart and I can't wait to, to tell you about them on our next time that we get to. Right. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, and so, and then we also do a bit of service production as well and then I sometimes, like today, hire myself out uh, mm -hmm. on various shows as a hired gun on, on occasion, so. Excellent. Well, yeah. Kate, um, I want to read something as a quote from your page that I thought was very moving. And oh. um, so it, it says, we believe that having a fer ferocious curiosity about the people and world that surrounds us is the key to finding big characters and phenomenal stories that mm. deserve to be told. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. I wrote uh, that. <laughs> that's a bit, take credit because <laughs> um, that, that's just, uh, and that's really what art is about in all different aspects yeah. is, is moving people in a special way. Yeah. And Absolutely. certainly being able to do this with stories and that deserve to be told. Mm -hmm. um, how has that helped shape the way you produce and direct your work? It's the, it's the key, it's the fundamental spine of everything I do. If I do a documentary or if I do a sci-fi or if I do a zombie Western, um, it really comes down to what, what am I trying to get at? What I'm trying to scratch at is the heart of of humanity and like the thing that makes us human. And, you know, my documentaries, it's about being curious about the world that's around me. Um, I'm looking out to a beautiful mountain view right now on downtown Vancouver. And, you know, both of my documentaries were about, one was environmental about my back door, literally. Right. And another was about, um, uh, it's called Not a Stranger. And it was about a man with depression. And it was just really about um, talking to people and getting to know people in your community and how this one in particular individual uh, kind of moved through his, his journey uh, in life with depression um, by talking to people. And so this um, kind of mission statement that you just read, it, it's not only that, but it's also, it's kind of just a blueprint to being a nice person. I mean, if we just right. were a little bit curious about the people around us, like the person sitting beside us in the cubicle or the person at the bus, if we were just a little bit more curious about other people other than ourselves, we would have so much more love and compassion and understanding mm -hmm. for us. And I th I almost, you know, I dare to, I wonder sometimes like how much of a nicer world we would have if we just took a second out of our day just to, you know, have a, a bit more of a conversation with our barista than we normally right, do. Right, so, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because um, like, you know, taking a moment or or the, the connection that someone gets through mm -hmm. a, viewing your productions, mm -hmm. um, it brings us a little bit closer together. Absolutely. And when we're closer together, we have a better perspective a different perspective and probably a better view 
of yeah. the world that is around us. And I have to say, Kate, thank you. Thank you. Thank you oh, for your perspective you. and oh, your wow. talent and putting it all together for the benefit of others. And certainly we, we, we're glad that your pockets um, get served as well. But um, yeah. I think the bigger value is what we're getting from the great oh. work that you're doing with all the talent that you're oh bringing my together. Gosh. Oh, wow. Bro, oh, you're going to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> I wish more than anything I could be with you guys um, this this time, but uh, it just did not work out in, in the schedule, unfortunately, which kills me because <laughs> we were season one was with you guys, and now yes. we're back with you, and it just uh, kills me that we're not there. Yes, but, and uh, well, we are happy to have you as one of our selections in this year's Miami Web Fest. And we know in the past, um, your season one was best sci-fi award winner. Yes. And um, so, yay. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we'll that, see means, that means it, bro. How, it's it's sitting on my mantelpiece, the award, too. <laughs> Real, uh, excellent, excellent. <laughs> so you have a little bit of Miami. I uh, sure do. I look at it are. every day. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. We appreciate that. And um, and I know our CEO, Brian Thompson, uh, mm -hmm. really appreciates your work as well. Thank you. So thank Thanks. you for being a part of Miami Web Fest and part of the Miami Web Fest family. So um, how can people stay in touch with you, Kate, and, and your content? Sure. Yeah, I am. Uh, well, K Green Productions is dot com is my website, uh, and everything kind of links to there. Um, I am on Twitter at K KGP Films uh, and Instagram as well. KGP Films. I've taken a little hiatus from social media, so um, I'm going to be going down to Rose City Comic Con uh, next week. Oh, so excellent. see me back on social media at that point. I, I decided to take a bit of a hiatus this past year. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't posted very much at all, but um, I'm at the Comic Con, Rose City Comic Con, uh, September 9th. So uh, that will be a great place to start posting some great pictures of, of fellow sci-fi lovers like myself. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. Well, I tell you, um, Kate, it's been a pleasure having you with us. Oh, and my, my um, we really look forward to um, the rest of season two of Narco Leap and, um, and all the great work that you're doing with Thank Kate you. Green Productions and your team there. Awesome. So um, ladies and gentlemen, again, it's Kate Green um, of executive producer, right? Of Kate Green Productions and a director and producer of Narco Leap, a series. So um, thank you, congratulations. And everyone, please come out to Miami Web Fest and meet the talented creators, experience the beauty and amazing content at the number one international celebration of digital media. It's new media in a new way. Miami Web Fest. You can get your tickets at miamiwebfest.com. Again, thank you, Miss Kate Green. Uh, thank you. And um, you. you're welcome. It's a pleasure having you. This is New Media in a New Way. I'm Ronald S. Gamble, and this is Miami Web Fest. Thank you. Come and see us in Miami, September 29th through October 2nd. All right.